Hello, my name is Tom Bulky, and I will be your instructor for the Guitar Repair Maintenance class. I've been playing guitar since I was about 13 years old, 13, 14, and I'm 43 now, so you do the math. And I've played professionally uh, for a few years. I've played in all kinds of bands from junior high through high school, college, and after college, and, and toured around and all kinds of stuff. Um, when I was about 18 years old, I took a guitar repair class in Denver, Colorado from a gentleman who was hosting it. And at the end of the class, he ended up hiring me into his repair shop. And so I worked as a certified luthier for about two or three years before I went back to college. Anyway, uh, after that, uh, what I kind of found out over time as I met different musicians along the way is that a lot of them, regardless if they were just kind of your average player who enjoyed playing at home and for themselves and with records and CDs and things like that, uh, to the professionals, all of them kind of struggled with how do I take care of my guitar, how do I maintain it, how do I set up the intonation and all of those types of things. And so I used to just do this for people all the time, uh, you know, wherever I ran into them. And sometimes they'd pay me, sometimes they wouldn't, uh, which at the time I didn't really care because uh, there's nothing like the feeling of seeing somebody walk away being very, very pleased with how the guitar is sounding and playing. And so I decided that I've got this knowledge and I know how to do it and I keep doing it for people. And so I said, why not just hold a class out of my house and start sharing that knowledge with other people so that they know how to take care of their guitar themselves and they don't feel the burden of trying to find somebody that they trust to work on their instruments. So what we'll be covering in the class is neck adjustment. Uh, this is your neck and your neck can have a couple of problems with it. One could be a hump, one could be a deep bow. Now your, your neck should have a little bit of a bow to it, but it could end up having a little bit of a deep bow. There's a thing that runs down the center of the neck that's called a truss rod, and there's a way to adjust that to kind of compensate for some of that. Uh, the other thing that we'll do is that you'll notice, especially with electric guitars, there's a lot of screws and nuts and bolts. We'll tighten all these things up, and I'll show you how to do that in such a way that you keep your guitar in pristine condition. Uh, if you've ever seen somebody who just like grabs a pair of pliers and they just start tightening stuff up, they end up scratching the guitar up. And, and uh, I personally like to try to keep all my instruments in mint condition. Um, you know, so I'll show you how to do that. Uh, we'll also clean the guitar. Uh, for some of you who play maybe acoustic and do a lot of open chords, you'll probably notice down in this area of your guitar that your strings have really corroded. And if you pull the strings apart and you look on the neck, and especially if you have like a rosewood neck or an ebony neck, you'll notice that there's a lot of gunkiness in there. And so there's a way to, to clean that up and polish up your frets to get them nice and shiny again and condition the neck, whether it's a, a maple neck like this or again, a rosewood or ebony fretboard that looks more like a Les Paul uh, has um, and, and get that condition, get, in, get it up to speed. We'll put new springs on it. Uh, we'll also adjust the string height. Uh, and there's a little bit of what we can do with that on acoustic, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And we'll also set the intonation. Now, intonation is the distance between your saddle and the 12th fret and the 12th fret and the nut, also taking into account the diameter of the string. And so there's a way to set that up so that your guitar is completely in tune. Now, I don't know if you've ever listened to somebody play the guitar where they can't really seem to get it in tune. And as you're listening, your head kind of starts tilting like a dog does when they hear a funny sound. It just kind of gets under your skin. It just doesn't sound right when, it, when it's not in good tune. So I'll help you get it uh, in as close as, as perfect pitch as we possibly can so that when you play different octaves on, on the guitar, it's completely in tune. Let me give you a quick example. So on this guitar, if I play these octaves, I mean, the guitar is a tear now. I missed a couple of notes there. I uh, forgot what my octaves were, but you kind of got the general idea. Now, for acoustic guitars, let me just go ahead and pick this one up and show you. Uh, there are adjustments that we can do with the intonation on this, but very, very little. You'll notice that there's this white saddle that's right here. You can shade this a little bit on the front or the back to kind of move it just a little bit there, but the truth is, 
there's not a lot of adjustment that you can do with that. And we probably won't get into a lot of it unless we have somebody's guitar that's pretty far off and we'll see what we can do about, uh, uh, about getting it a little bit closer. Um, if the height on this is, uh, is, is high, like if you notice that the strings are really far off the fretboard, we can shade down the saddle too um, and, and take care of that. But uh, if it's too far out of whack, uh, I'll probably send you to an actual luthier. It's something that I can do, but it'll be on the, it will be beyond the scope of the class. Um, but, uh, and just kind of another little disclaimer, all guitars, well, I shouldn't say all guitars, the majority of the guitars are made out of wood. Um, some are laminate, laminate meaning kind of like plywood, but obviously much better quality of plywood than what you would get at, at Home Depot or Lowe's. But, uh, or it's a solid body, or it's a solid piece of wood. Now, because it's made out of wood, wood is obviously grown in a tree, and each tree is unique. And because of that, each guitar is gonna have kind of its own resonancy from that wood. And so I have seen guitars that were cheap, what would somebody, somebody might consider to be a junky guitar, and they sound phenomenal. And it's all because of what the wood is. And so what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get you as close as we can to pristine um, so that you walk away with your guitar set up to the best, best possibility that we can get it at and uh, so that you will really enjoy it. Uh, one of the other things that we'll do for you electric players is we'll adjust the pickup height uh, to make sure that it's not too close to the strings or too far from the strings. Um, now, if you're one of these crazies who's got one of these guitars that's like this and has the Floyd Rose tremolo system on it, and I'll try to get this a little bit closer here, uh, you'll see that. Kind of looks like that. Get in the light a little better. Okay. If you've got one of these things, go ahead and send me an email and let me know that you've got this. And I'll try to set up a class at some point uh, for yours. Now, the Floyd Rose Tremolo system, it's one of the best tremolo systems that are out on the market. However, it's a little tedious to set up. And I don't want to slow the class down. Um, for everybody else, if you've got one of these, so if I can group a bunch of you guys together, then you'll all be going at the same pace. Now, once this is set up and stabilized, it's really, really good. It just takes a while to get there, uh, and it's just a little bit more challenging. Like I said, it's a little bit more tedious, but once, once it's set up and stabilized, it's really good. Now, one of the things that I have noticed over the years is a lot of folks that will get a guitar that has a tremolo, whether it's like the Stratocaster or something like this with this Floyd Rose, they'll get the guitar, but then they take the whammy bar and they stick it in their case and they never use it. And so if you're one of those folks that doesn't ever really use this thing, we'll probably talk about how we can set your guitar up in a way that I call blocked, which means that it only bends down, it doesn't bend back so it doesn't float anymore. Now the benefit of that is, is that because it doesn't float, you don't have to play with the tension between the string and the springs that are in the back of the guitar. What you can do is you can set it up so that it only bends down and that way the, your tuning of your guitar ends up becoming much, much, much easier. So those are kind of the basic things that we'll cover in the class. Uh, we'll be doing this out of my house in my garage. If it's cold, I'll bring a heater out here and try to make it as comfortable as possible. Uh, you know, want to make you feel like you're you're welcome in, in my home, and, uh, and we'll have a good time. And I'll try to answer all your questions that you have. And it's my goal that you walk out educated and with your guitar in as close as pristine condition as we can possibly get it in. I look forward to meeting you. Send me an email. You can check out my website. Uh, it's www.austinguitarrepair.com, and uh, we'll just take it from there. Peace.